Uh, the only thing I got to start was this is the first room I have worked in a while that didn't have a PowerPoint and a whiteboard and all that kind of stuff I could use to explain myself. So I'm going to be like going on bare naked. <laughs> uh, the year was I'm not telling you, but I was 18 years old and a sophomore at university. And a professor of mine saw a number of things that I had written for shows and skits and other things that they do in college. And he suggested I was wasting my time unless I use that for something else. And he said, I, I want to get you in with somebody and I, or two. And he did. And he got me an interview with the fifth largest ad agency in the world on Madison Avenue. And I went in there and uh, the guy said, well, he sent me over these things and you're our boy, four bucks an hour, which at that time was very good for a part-time guy, just a paid intern. So I go down there and my head is like, I hear the helium balloon that you were tying to them, right? It was like, I'm God's gift to writing. Yeah. No, but not for the first four months. They wouldn't let me write anything. It was just sit and shut up and get coffee. Okay, so I did, and I tried to learn, and I did all of that. And then there comes the day that they gave me an assignment all my own. Right? And they said, I need 280, 320 words, my boss said, on this dog food. Here's the brief. Take it home. I want it back in three days. Okay. I went home. It was a weekend. I worked on it. I threw stuff away. I worked on it. I threw it away. I threw it away. I was so... And then I got inspired. God came down out of the clouds, <laughs> out of Life magazine, and he said, do it this way. So I did it that way. And I brought it into him on Monday. And I handed him the office memo. You ever, those of you who are young have never seen these, but they put in the, with your name and they have this little tie screen you put the, and you use that envelope until you get like all 40 people who have gotten it and it's all threadbare. That's where mine was. It was terrible. It was tattered, but I gave it to him and I was proud. I said, you're going to read it? He said, of course I'm going to read it. I said, now? He says, no. Okay. So I went back to my little cubicle and did what I had to do. And I saw him at the end of the day. I said, well, did you read it? He said, no. I saw him the next morning. Same question, same answer. And finally he said, look, I won't read it until the weekend. Get used to it. I want to dwell over it. And I'll see you on Monday. Okay, then. Monday comes. Here he has an envelope under his arm and he comes in, hands it to me. I said, you read it? He said, absolutely. Okay then, um, what'd you think? He said, well, I read it about six times. My wife read it about four times. We both agreed it was one of the most humorous, likable, funny treatments I've ever seen for dog food. I said, wow, are we going to run it? He says, no, it really sucks. <laughs> and you see that helium balloon just go <whistles> into a little tiny like that. Well, I said to him, Neil, why? He said, because my wife has a PhD. I have a master's degree. I've been doing this for 25 years. And I gave it to my 11-year-old daughter, and she didn't understand a word you said. Now, you write that thing till she does. And I learned my first lesson in advertising and in writing. You write the general public to the intelligence level of a bright fifth grader. And that was my first lesson in that funny world of the madman. Mm -hmm.